Hallo und herzlich willkommen hier auf diesem Kanal. Es freut mich sehr, dass du hier bei diesem sonnigen Wetter in Costa Rica eingeschalten hast. Ich befinde mich jetzt hier gerade bei einer Farm, El Toledos heißt sie, und das ist eine ganz spezielle Farm. Und zwar ist das eine Permakulturfarm und zwar die einzige hier in dem Umkreis bzw. in der Region von Athenas bzw. Zentral Costa Rica. Und die bauen halt hier nach Prinzipien der Permakultur nachhaltig Kaffee an und natürlich auch viele verschiedene andere Obst- und Gemüsesorten. Das ist halt leider meistens eher weniger der Fall, wenn man hier in die Umgebung schaut, weil halt dann die Leute doch zur Chemiekeule greifen bzw. auch auf Monokultur setzen und so die Natur eher ausbeuten anstatt fördern. Und da dachte ich mir halt einfach, wenn ich mal schon hier in der Nähe bin, dann schaue ich mir die Permakultur hier an, El Toledos, und nehme natürlich auch an ihrer Kaffeetour teil, um so halt ein bisschen von ihrer Permakultur zu lernen, wie sie ihren Kaffee anbauen und natürlich auch ihre Mentalität mitnehmen. Und da möchte ich euch einfach mal mitnehmen und schauen wir uns einfach mal gemeinsam El Toledos, die Kaffeetour bzw. die Permakultur Farm an. So, if we have some, so many coffee farmers around the world, have you ever thought about what is the side effect of being, a, being part of the coffee industry? Have you ever thought about what are we doing to nature by 25 million farmers killing down the forest mm -hmm. to just produce something that is just luxury? Mm -hmm. Not a real necessity, no food, right? right? Have you ever thought about that? Why? I'm not saying you are the one that I need to blame, but the market mm. is not telling us what it really is. So the market hides the reasons why we shouldn't get that product. So if we hide the reasons why we shouldn't get that, people don't know what products are in reality. And it's not just about coffee, I guess it's about all products. Imagine if you start analyzing the same way every other product that we use in our lives. Mm -hmm. And that's why sometimes if I need something, I need to survive, that would be a creating problems in farming or something, and we need the consequences of that. But if I just use something like coffee, which is just luxury, and it has consequences for my future, maybe I don't need the consequences of luxury for my future, because it's something that I don't really need. That's what I'm trying to tell you, and starting with coffee, there's so many other things that probably could be similar or like coffee in many ways. Today, the world is so interesting that we are doing the things over and over, and we don't know why. I thought they said coffee helps you live longer. If you know if we pay the doctors to say that? <laughs> Maybe. <Yeah. laughs> Do you know if... Who is I don't they know. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to make you think, why, why do we hear these good things about it? I mean, is it really real? Or is it marketing that we are trying to... Uh, we find a minimal thing that is good in coffee, mm -hmm. and we are gonna pull this out because that's amazing. Before that, <laughs> nobody I knew about it. it. <laughs> if you're a coffee drinker, uh -huh. you're gonna pay attention to those things. Yes. If you are not a coffee drinker, you're gonna pay attention of all the products that's and right. the reason yeah. why we don't should drink coffee for. It's convenient, right? It's convenient. We if we like uh, that. We're gonna see the reasons why we should follow that mm -hmm. more and more and more. Um, Coffee today is um, using 25 million farms around the tropics, areas that there's a little plenty of rainfall. Mm -hmm. uh, imagine the amount of pollution that there is when farmers cut down the forest and use farming mm -hmm. and, and all of this stuff. Today, we are not criticizing coffee farming. Today, we are criticizing, for example, meat. We say meat is actually ruining uh, our world, it's pollution so much the methane that go to the atmosphere, the nitrous that go into the water. And I hear environmentalists criticizing coffee while they drink a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. What would be better for a future? Not drink coffee or not eat meat? I guess not drink coffee. Because if I eat meat, I survive. If I drink coffee, I don't. Imagine all the problems I make, we, we could make in farming. They are there in coffee, they are there in meat. Besides farming, we harvest the coffee and start using, uh, start processing the coffee. 
The process, of course. Only the process, not the final. That's why I'm trying to make a difference. It uses 100 liters of water to process one cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. So can coffee be sustainable? Yes, because sustainable certifications are to charge more. Sustainable certifications are not to make better products. Mm. Like as a carbon neutral car. I don't know, it's still a car. A carbon yeah. neutral coffee. I mean, it's still unneeded. And we pay happily more money for that product thinking that it actually is going to make it better for me. I don't know. Sometimes I'm, that, that's why I like to criticize that. So we can see more, and not necessary to blame anybody, excuse me, if it feels like that, but in reality, I want you to learn what coffee is without hiding what I've learned about it. Not necessary to convince you not to drink coffee, <laughs> because I'm a coffee farmer. And guess <laughs> I make, how I make a living? <laughs> Selling coffee. So do you know why I'm doing this today? Because we appreciate your support. By coming here today, you're supporting our family, whole, uh, uh, all the members of the farm that we are working together. And we, the best way we appreciate that is by giving you a little extra. We don't want to sell you coffee. Somebody else did it for us. We want, to, we want you to know why probably we have to criticize products. Not only one, many others. So if I had to choose, for example, like I said, that is good for a, a bad for nature to take it out of my diet. I probably don't drink coffee and eat meat. If I had to choose for health, I probably don't eat meat and I probably don't drink coffee either. <laughs> That's all I learned about this good product. Doctors say red, red meat is cancerogenic and we still all use it. We all know how, plas how bad plastic does are and we forget about it when we go shopping. I mean, it's, we know things are bad, we still do it. It's, I don't know why we are structured this way. I guess laziness, convenience, it's made us screw up this way. We are so much into, that's, that's what we were told to do, that's what we're gonna keep doing. And we don't question the system. If we're all going there, everyone follows each other, not knowing why. And that's actually why I'm telling you, we have to probably wake up, try to do things different for our own good. Today, instead of telling you I am an environmentalist and I'm going to tell you to save the planet, save the environment, I'm going to say forget about nature, because I'm also hearing about the scientific saying that humans are going to disappear and the nature is going to continue. So we have to save ourselves instead of saving nature. But to do that, we probably have to do the same changes that we would do if we want to save nature. So it's not about nature, it's about ourselves. And that's why I want you to see that because we were people who didn't believe in changes for nature, that we take some. And those changes are also good for ourselves. And that's why we love the way of farming we're doing here. What we're doing here is actually something that we started changing 30 years ago. But before getting into details, let me ask you this. If this is a chemical product, and this is organic, which is better? <laughs> maybe if I ask before I tell you a little bit, maybe you have to say, oh, organic is great, right? Uh -huh. But now you're thinking. That's why I like it. And I hope, I hope you, you, uh, uh, you are not bored by hearing these things and actually making you think a little. I hope that that, that idea can, can go on a little bit more in this way, for example. Chemicals organic. The market says this is good. The market says this is bad. We pay more money for this. And when we buy this product, it's labeled organic, certified organic. But because it's labeled organic, it means it's not grown in the neighborhood, so it's definitely brought from outside, sometimes in the corner, sometimes really far away. So when this product come, come here, it's actually pol polluting the environment, our planet, more than neighbors using chemicals. And then when I buy this product, my neighbors don't find a market for their products, so the only way they can sell this is actually exporting this around the world, uh -huh. right? So what are we doing when we choose organic that is not local? Polluting the environment. More problems. So if we use organic okay, chemicals and we use pesticides, fertilizers, insecticides, and things to farm, we know that there are problems. The farmers don't do this for the problems. Farmers do that for the benefit each chemical makes for ourselves. 
for farming. So that's why I'm not going to criticize farmers who use chemicals. Because if we do that, there is a benefit, a reason to use chemicals. But people think organic is healthy. So instead of using uh, fertilizers, we use chicken poop. We fertilize our vegetables with chicken poop, and if that chicken poop fell on the leaves of the plant, I don't know if you heard this, but people say, hey, chemical products, you have to wash them really well. If it's organic, you don't even have to wash it. So if it's organic, we're probably gonna eat the chicken poop that we spray on the vegetables. We, cr we could probably get more sick doing that, no washing our vegetables that are organic, right. than eating the chemical vegetables without washing them. Why? Because somehow the chemicals that we're using farming, they do went to a laboratory to prove that they were not toxic, and then they can allow in organic farming or they were not as deadly, at least, for people, you know? So then, if we use this, it's natural, but then we use a toxic plant, and then we use a toxic root, and then we're like mad science, mixing a toxic plant, toxic leaf, and stuff like that to fumigate my plantation organically, because it is allowed in organic farming. Mm -hmm. What makes that healthy? To be honest, I don't know. But that is allowed in organic farming. So that's why I'm questioning that. With that said, who do you think we are here? Chemical farming or organic farming? Mm -hmm. Organic. Because we're criticizing chicken poop. Chicken poop here. We are criticizing ourselves. We're drinking chicken We are criticizing ourselves. We are organic farmers. Yeah, yeah. We are coffee farmers. Mm -hmm. So that is actually why, what I want you to, to think. <laughs> it's actually a... We changed, there's so many things. If I use a toxic plant that kills insects, which insect does it kill? Does it kill only the problem for farming? Or does it kill also butterflies, bees, and many other insects that are good too? But that would do that too. This would do that too, so better which one? I don't know, or they are the same, they're bad, that's good. I don't know, it's, 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 it's the way I am trying to tell you that we are organic farmers who do not believe in organic as a healthy product. Mm -hmm. We do believe more in farmers, not necessarily the names that products are in the supermarket. Product names that are in the supermarket sometimes are just for marketing, just for selling the product. They're not necessary to make a difference, by the way, how many times a year we inspect it to warranty that we don't use chemicals in our farm? Never. One time a year. Do we know when they're coming? No. Yes. Yes. Yes, we know when they're coming. Yes. So we do know when they're coming, and besides that, is there corruption here or not? Yes. Yes. Everywhere. So. <laughs> Can we buy the inspectors, give them money, and then at the end have a yield with a dollar price? Maybe that happens. <laughs> ah, okay. So now, next time you go to the supermarket and you see the organic label, maybe you're gonna think about this. And if you think about this, probably you can choose products that are labeled local, or that products that are, maybe instead of going to the supermarket, going to the farmer's market. Yeah. But what's the problem? Today we don't care about food. Humans stop worrying about what food is. How many of you care about food? We do, right? <laughs> How many of you know people that want to be farmers when they grow up, when they get out of college? Yeah. So that is actually uh, good there. Actually, but <laughs> if, if we don't do that, for example, if we don't care about that, if we say it's because we are treating farmers really bad, the structure of the economy is treating farmers really bad. When we go to the farmer's market, this is what we do. Can I get two for the price of one? Because I know the farmer, they grow it, so they can probably break the deal, right? But if we go to warmer, we just pay whatever they ask, they ask for. Them. So which way do we treat farmers and which way do we treat big corporations? Mm -hmm. I guess we treat big corporations the way farmers should be treated. And what I'm trying to tell you is, if we keep going this way, how healthy our food is. People say today we don't have money to eat healthy, right? Sometimes I hear that a lot. We don't have money to be healthy. And if we say that, and if we drink a cup of coffee, we are contradicting ourselves. Because a cup of coffee is more expensive than vegetables, more expensive than fruits. Real fruit, real vegetables, and stuff like that is actually cheaper than coffee. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. Coffee, with all this, is a product that is being 
uh, put that way in the market to probably make money. Same as organic, same as uh, fresh rate sometimes. Maybe there are good intentions behind. Good people everywhere, even in big corporations, there are good people. But there are side effects of things. That, for example, in coffee, I don't even know what coffee is. And, and that's what I want to get into a, a, a little bit. Um, when we treat farmers really bad, we prefer the cheaper stuff also. We give the money probably to the bigger corp corporations and make small farmers disappear. Now, are you seeing why we grow coffee? Obviously, because we can't compete with food prices that are down there. Small farmers don't, don't have options to compete in the market with food production, so we prefer to grow luxury. Maybe don't just decide that in general, but that's what the economy is doing in an unintended, an unintended way. That's why we grow cotton summers, that's why we grow ornamental plants summers, that's why we grow decoration plants or flowers. And we grow a lot of stuff. But ironically, today we are hearing the population of the world is more than 7 billion people and it keeps on growing higher and higher and higher. And farming is kind of shrinking and shrinking. And if we continue going that way, we're going to have food shortage really soon. Mm -hmm. You heard that before? Mm -hmm. I don't know why, because I don't believe it. 25 million farmers growing coffee. We could grow tons of food if we wanted to. But we instead of growing tons of food, we grow tons of coffee. And besides that, we have a product that is nutritional and we don't even realize. And this is actually what I'm trying to tell you. Today, one of the biggest problems of humans is our waste. We have so much waste everywhere. We don't even think about that. Today, the market is selling us every time bigger and bigger fridges. And the bigger the fridge is, the more waste there is because we can already use it all. So when that happens, uh, there's waste everywhere, and that's part of uh, the demand of food that we have nowadays. 25 million farmers around the world not growing food tells me we don't have food products. Besides that, what do you think coffee is? Fruit, bean, vegetable, grain, nuts. In the language, we say in English, coffee beans. In Spanish we say granos de café, coffee grains. Is it a grain? No. Is it a bean? No. Coffee is actually a cherry. Fruit. So if coffee is a fruit, why don't we use the fruit for something? So when we drink coffee, are we drinking a juice? No. Because the fruit part is not used for that. But when we drink coffee, we are processing the fruit and we use a hundred liters of water to take those fruits away because humans are no hunger. Coffee was brought from Ethiopia, Africa to the New World, America, to feed the world or make money? Yeah. Make money. So, if we did this to make money, we were told, grow the seeds and get those fruits and process that to then make coffee with what there is inside the seed. So we were told to make money with coffee, and so we are capitalist farmers, even though we don't really want to do that. And we use 100 liters of water to throw the fruit part of the coffee away, and from that time on, we talk about coffee grains, granos de café, or coffee beans. And then we peel this off, and inside there is the nut. So this is the coffee nut that we put into the roaster, and then the coffee flavors appear. But why don't we use the fruit part of the coffee? Because it's not nutritional, or because we don't have hunger problems in the world? I guess because we don't have hunger problems in the world. Because lately, we are hearing there's companies using it for many, many good things for people. And that's why I'm telling you, that not, only, not only in the coffee industry, in many areas, there's many good intentions and many good uh, actions taken. But sometimes we don't have time to see those because we are busy criticizing the world instead of admiring people who are doing good changes and following that. So, um, Coffee farmers heard that coffee fruit can be used for something, but we heard plastic bags are bad and we still throw it away. It's kind of hard for us to change. I don't know why, right? For years we've been hearing this, and last five years ago we heard, for example, about coffee flour. We heard about coffee flour before. Coffee flour is actually 
like any other flower, like whole wheat, pinch it and try. It's fruity, citrusy. It's got a lot of flavors. More than flour. You put flour in your mouth, it's just a texture and it's not necessarily flavorful. As flavorful as it is, it's also nutritional. And the nutrition value of that is double nutrition than wheat flour. Like, we can feed more people by doing that than with wheat flour. What kind of It's gluten-free. Oh, gluten-free. But what nutrients are in it? I, I, I had a picture of the... Um, of the um, of the nutrition value of it, but I, I forgot exactly the, but I was comparing that with regular flour, and they're about double of each nutrition there is in flour. Yeah. So it's, it's really interesting to see that this is in protein higher than actually what there is in. Yeah. And, and that's why it makes me think. How hard is it to make? It depends on the way you see it. Uh, to make this, we have to not use water in the process. How much water did I tell you we use in the process? 100 liters of water per cup of coffee. To make this, we have to use one liter of water to process 500 cups of coffee. So, if we hear the water process that is actually ecologic, the machine we have is described as an ecologic machine. The ecologic machine is good for people who think about nature, but is it good for people who think about their families? But farmers, if it's expensive, if it's ecologic, is it cheaper or more expensive? If something is ecologic, but you're gonna buy, it, so oh, that's more expensive. More usually, expensive. usually more expensive. So when that's why we are kind of taking so much time to take ecologic changes because we see that it's not convenient for me. It's more expensive. Right. And if it's more expensive for me to not use water, but it's gonna be cheaper for my next generation to have portable water to drink. What I'm missing is the long-term thinking. Yeah, sustainable. Exactly. So maybe it's not sustainable for our people come next. So that's why not using water could be important. But if we just go for the money, using water makes it cheaper. And if it's making it cheaper, we have more profits. And if we have more profits, we don't care about our next generation. That's actually what I'm seeing. So it is possible. And this machine, the uh, machine we have here, for example, is something we've been using for 15 years. And we use it more than, we use it about 10 years and didn't know what to use this for. Mm -hmm. Because all my life, I was asking my, my dad, can I eat it? Because it tastes good. Uh -huh. My dad said, no, because it can give you a stomach ache. Why? Because it's so sweet. Have you heard uh, the sweet contain, for example, the sweet produce or the scale of measurement, the sweetness of produce? That is called bricks. Sugar cane, to start with, we use it to make sugar, and it has 15 bricks. A grapes have about 20 bricks. Coffee, about 30 bricks. So we get double the sugar contained on coffee fruits than sugar cane juice. Why don't we use that sugar for something? That, that's what I'm saying, that I don't know why our vision is so narrow and we make a lot of mistakes in many forms and I'm a coffee farmer that for 80 years my family have thrown that away and now we're trying to wake up and figure out. Yeah, and that exactly is what is going on around the world right now. People are making money with trash. Mm -hmm. Countries, entire countries actually now buying trash from their neighbors mm -hmm. and turning that even into energy in, in a way that is not even polluting the environment by carbon dioxide, all of that, and, and they are making money with all of that process. So why don't we take these things before is, I don't know, before we ruin the life of our next generation? It's actually what I'm trying to, to tell you. There's possible changes we have to take, but sometimes it takes too long for us to take those changes. In the plastic industry, I see that. It has to be a law that mm -hmm. plastic is denied, mm -hmm. so people don't take uh, plastic bags home. Yeah. Why don't we change before the law? We all know plastic yeah. is bad. It drives me crazy because at our grocery store, they put a paper bag inside the plastic bag, oh. and I'm like, please stop doing that. <laughs> and it makes me crazy, but I'm like... Uh -huh. And even that, for example, if I see, if I see a really steady, confused plastic bag, I would probably prefer that one. 
because if I see a plastic bag that just uh, breaks really yeah. easy, uh -huh. I don't know, I, it cannot well, be reused. They, and they, then they put two. And, and then, then they put two, exactly. exactly. And it's then crazy. if if that happens, for example, if we don't, if we bundle plastic and we're gonna start using paper bags, uh -huh. we have to till down forests and grow a lot of trees to just make paper right. ba paper bags. I know. What could it's be what could be better? Right. Exactly. Sometimes it's I don't know. It's like it's doubt. I mean, if I don't you, know. If you recycle the plastic bags, but people throw them away. Exactly. If you recycle plastic, that's a little bit better. But if we don't. Crazy. The papers are better. Why or how? I don't know. These are things we actually have to, to analyze a little. Not only that, there's many other things to talk about. Coffee. Coffee flower. Have you ever heard about that before? Was this the first time? First time. The reason we don't know about options of flower in the market is because we always prefer the white flower. And we prefer the white flower, I guess we still give her money to big corporations mm -hmm. and we don't support small changes that are happening around the world. If you go to macrobiotics, I don't know how you call that, the pharmacies that give you healthy products mm -hmm. and options, there's many kind of flowers you can use. Yeah. But we don't really do that. We, and they're growing, but really slowly compared to how the white flower is dominating the whole uh, yeah. food industry. And that's usually bleached, which is even crazy. Same, same as sugar. It's all bleached white. It's exactly. And it's, 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 that's what I'm trying to... Uh, I don't know. There are things that uh, it's hard to figure out why we don't do it before. Um, Have coffee. Have you tried to cook with that or like sure. bake, bake something? We, we started five years ago and we've been through many different recipes, uh -huh. finding out how we can use it and how we can tell our customers how to use it. But it's growing, but really slowly. Does it dissolve like into a paste, or is it granular the whole time? It's granular. Mm -hmm. We have to grind it really, really, really fine, mm -hmm. and so it's more like a whole wheat. Mm -hmm. You have to mix it with another product that is more. Because the fruit have caffeine. Yes, so we make caffeinated bread. Oh, it's gluten free too. So. <laughs> okay, now this is the side, right? Now, now we're talking. Now we're so also this side too. Uh, coffee yeah, juice, right. coffee tea. Coffee, uh, anything you imagine we can make with a fruit, we can make it with a coffee fruit. Uh -huh. mm. Coffee pies, I don't know. <laughs> coffee juice, and what do you do with juice? Uh, in mm, all times, there's many ways of preserving juice. Uh, so we were recommended uh, to actually ferment that and make kind of a wine with a fruit pie. Mm -hmm. And coffee wine from our coffee juice, have you ever heard of that? That's something else. There's so many other things we can make, and this is these are things that started taking place when my dad got sick with the chemicals, moved to organic. It was our own reason. My dad got sick with the chemicals. That's why we started doing organic farming. To be honest, we didn't change to do organic for nature, and we didn't change to do organic for the environment or the consumers. We changed for ourselves. If you think about health. Why should you buy healthy products? Is it for the farmer or is it for yourself? Is it for the market or is it for yourself? So I guess it makes sense to research food. Organic isn't the best option, it's expensive. So expensive food isn't always... Think about prices. What sets the prices? The quality or offer and demand? Demand. So if it is really expensive, it doesn't mean it's healthy. If it's really expensive, it's being, it's being marketing a lot and there's a lot. So it's, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Spending money on food, like healthy food, is not the answer. The answer is researching. Trying to find out where my food comes from. Humans say we don't have money, eh, time, sorry, to, to research food because our life is already so busy. We do so much work and stuff, but we do have time to research technology, computers, flat screen TVs, yeah. serious, right? To get the best one, because we don't want to get one that is going to break or stuff like that. But why don't we do time? Why do we do have time to research a food? I don't know. We see that that's my reason to say we don't have, a, we don't care about health. We care about many other things today. If you haven't heard this, this is really interesting. In the 70s, people were spending about 90% of their budget on food. Right now, we are spending less than 10% of our budget on food. And this is, this is something to consider, something to think about. So our life is so busy on things maybe that we don't need as much. So that is actually why the change from chemicals to organic was important. And from organic, it didn't work. So we have to keep going. We have to move on. If organic didn't work, 
many farmers actually went back to chemicals. We didn't because my, my dad got sick with the chemicals. So as we didn't move back to chemicals, we did mechanics to survive, taxi driving, construction, driving out there, many things. But we gave it a try to other techniques of farming. For example, agroforestry, for example, biodynamic farming, and also permaculture farming. These names are names that we didn't like because organic was t teaching us it's not necessarily good for us. Like, environmentalists came to Costa Rica. They teach farmers to go from chemicals to organic. The percentage was about 8% that changed to the organic. And today, there's only 1%. Because it didn't work economically, farmers had to go back to chemicals or sell the land to survive because they weren't able to make it. That's a reason to not believe in environmentalists. So if we hear about agroforestry, or if we, if we hear about biodynamic or permaculture farming, we're like, there are the environmentalists coming again. Yeah. So we don't, we didn't believe that could be a thing. But when we changed, and the reason that it didn't work was that the production dropped seventy-five percent. We're honest farmers. So we want to be certified organic. And we're going to do it the way the structure allowed us to do it. The production was low, and then with the organic price, we get double price. But the seventy-five percent drop, it was just fifty percent income of what we used to have. That makes us not believe in organic as uh, a way of survival. So that's also what made us try other things. And because our production was so low that we didn't mind risking that to other new names. So that's why agroforestry, biodynamic, and even permaculture has been teaching us to research our own problems and see how we can fix ourselves instead of fixing the world. We can do that. We have to start changing for ourselves. See what I, how I can improve my life. And one of the best ways to do it is seeing how much we're wasting, how much time we're wasting, how much produce we are wasting, and try to use that to improve our lives. And that's one of the ideas that actually is being really important. That's why when we've heard about flour, we're like, let's try that even though I don't believe in it. <laughs> we heard about wine, let's try that even though I don't believe in it, or I don't even drink wine. So it's actually how we started, little by little. So, let's move on. Try to um, also um, try a little bit of coffee in taste. In different stages. These ones right here were processed just last night and they were placed in this area right this morning. That's where they're really wet. So you see, mm -hmm. we have a um, so, basically. Um, we have the machine that does a wet process right there. We're going to see that and how that works. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the drying process, which is happening right here. So if you want to get your hands dirty, you can. That's the wet from the coffee bulbs. Uh, this is different stages of the coffee being dry. That's the standard color of the coffee, the two seeds inside the bean, as they look when they're processing the standard way. This one right here, you can see, you can tell the difference. Like that one is a little more advanced into the drying process. 
But this one here was processed differently. So, I'm gonna handle you some of this so you can, or why not you walk this way here and get some of those beans and some of those ones here. Uh, if you want, or I'll pass you some more. So, yeah, from those, yeah, those are similar to this one. So, you can get some beans there. Sticky. Mm -hmm. They're very sticky, yeah. They're very sticky. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can barely get those. So, uh, what before Never. any, any, any yeah. coffee experience now okay so yeah this is this is where the plants are this is a small bush this is a four year old plant which by now is already uh, somewhere around the second harvest and as you can see because we're right there in the harvest uh, it's uh, all of those little little pieces little, Right here is where the beans were hanging. Somebody already came and picked the beans. But there's still some other beans that are kind of red and even green, like these ones right here. So that's why the harvest is like a three month time when we go several times, probably six times around picking the beans that are getting ready. If you look at the plant down the road, this one. Yeah, so they, um, they, they don't change that fast into being ready to be picked. So we, we get quite some time, particularly because it happens during the summer time here. So we are really lucky to, with the weather pattern, it's always very well. Um, the same, mm -hmm. I mean, the rainy season, uh, which by the way, you know, it's, it's a year, it's a year cycle. Why? Because if we, if we look what's going to happen in the coming months, so we're going to pick all the beans, and it, this, con this will continue to be summertime, so the plants will stay dormant for three months. And they will be basically these little buds here on in the middle of the really green areas, and you can look at some of the plants in the back. Sana, they, these are the areas where the new coffee beans are gonna be growing on the next harvest. However, they will stay there until the first rains come on April. Well, because on April here in Costa Rica is, is the start or the transition from summer to rainy season. So they will get excited uh, when the water is coming in and and they will bloom. It's a really white, it's a really nice white flower that forms a little bean. So that bean will stay green, small but green, for eight months, uh, from April to up to about now, which is about eight months. And uh, they will go from really small to the characteristic size, which is like that. Um, and then when when it's about time to, to ripe, the, the plant will start putting all the nutrients to the beans to actually get them to go from really green and really hard to fruity and, uh, and actually do make the beans uh, uh, capable to germinate, which is what the plant is thinking. But for us, it's thinking, for us we think about that process as the, as the process which is actually you know, putting all the flavors 
and all of the things to the bean that is going to be a really good bean for roasting and brewing. Uh, if you, if we don't get a good ripening, ripe, ripening process, we are in trouble. Yes. Mm, beans are don't get that right; they're 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 tasteless. So it's a critical pro uh, process. Um, so remember, this is kind of four-year-old plant. It will continue to grow. The branches underneath will certainly die at certain point. For example, this one you see, there are no more leaves, and they don't even look like promising for next year because there's no there's no activity. And uh, they will probably dry. And we know that main the main harvest, the main area that is going to be producing is on top. So as it continues to grow, and we will see more plants on the way. The the area of the plant that is actually producing is kind of narrow. It's not like the whole thing is full right. with that. So, uh, which lead us to some other facts. Like for example, we we trim the plant. So after 10 years, this plant will be about this high, and it's kind of getting tired. So we trim it or prune it, and it'll grow again. Mm. Uh, we will see some of those that way, by the way. So that's why we have coffee plants here that might be as old as 40, 50, 60 years and they are still there and still producing. Obviously it's never the same when you have a new plant versus an old plant that might have been impacted by disease or things like that. But um, yeah, I've never seen a plant die because of age. They, they, never, they never die. So. von El Toledo's Capitu erhalten, die Permakultur Farm hier in Athenas in der Region und ich möchte einfach noch mal einen, äh, einen kleinen Nachtrag sozusagen machen, weil das Video ja, bzw. der Vortrag doch in Englisch war, dann möchte ich vielleicht noch mal die wesentlichen Punkte zusammenfassen. Also der Grund, warum die Farmer von El Toledo's sich für die Permakultur und den ökologischen Anbau entschieden haben, ist, weil sie nicht aus Zuliebe der Natur und der nachfolgenden Generation das machen, sondern weil der Vater durch den konventionellen Anbau mit den ganzen chemikalischen Mitteln krank geworden ist. Und aus diesem Grund bzw. wegen dem Wohlergehen des Vaters sind sie auf, nachhaltige, ähm, auf den nachhaltigen Anbau umgestiegen. Kann ich auch durchaus verstehen, dass man auch durch solche Gründe ja, die Anbaumethoden bzw. seine Lebensweise ändert. Auch hat Gabriel, der den Vortrag gehalten hat, erwähnt, dass er auch dieses Bio-Label bzw. die Bürokratie drumherum auch sehr kritisch findet, weil dann doch sehr viel auf Marketing gesetzt wird. Das heißt, man lässt sich bewusst dieses Bio-Siegel ja, 
zertifizieren lassen. Durch Marketing tut man das dann nochmal ein bisschen pushen, dass ein Produkt besser ist. Und durch die ganzen Marketingkosten, die Werbungskosten und die Zertifizierung steigen natürlich die Preise der Lebensmittel in die Höhe. Und oftmals sind sie dann doch von der Qualität her auch nicht so das Ware, wie sie den Vorstellungen des Verbrauchers entsprechen bezüglich der Nachhaltigkeit. Auch hier in Costa Rica wird viel mit Korruption gehandhabt. Also das heißt, dass sich hier auch viele Farmer diese organischen oder Biosiegel auch erkaufen können bei den Behörden. Zumal, dass die ja, Kontrollen der Behörden auch den Farmern bekannt wird, beziehungsweise der genaue Zeitpunkt der Kontrollen. Abra hat auch ganz bewusst betont erwähnt, dass er lieber regional bei Farmern im Ort einkaufen würde, dass man einfach den ja, Menschen Kontakt hat. Man weiß, um welche Person es sich handelt. Man baut ein gewisses Vertrauen zu dieser Person ähm, auf und dann entsteht halt automatisch im Laufe der Zeit ein ja, harmonisches Miteinander, welches dann auch höchstwahrscheinlich im ja, nachhaltigen Anbau, so wie es halt die Natur vorgesehen hat, enden wird und das auch ohne entsprechende Biozertifizierung, weil es ist ja auch oftmals so ja kritisiert auch, dass die Produkte zwar bio und nachhaltig deklariert werden, aber dann doch aus verschiedenen Ländern kommen. Also zum Beispiel, wenn jetzt hier in Costa Rica wachsen zum Beispiel keine Äpfel und wenn die jetzt zum Beispiel aus Neuseeland hierher importiert werden, dann hat das für ihn, auch wenn sie bio sind, nicht viel mit Nachhaltigkeit oder nachhaltigem Denken zu tun. Interessant fand ich auch, dass er Kaffee eigentlich als wertlos betrachtet, mehr als Genussmittel sieht, weil dein Kaffee bei der Herstellung eigentlich keine Nährstoffe hat und den Körper eigentlich vorgaukelt, er würde mehr Energie bekommen, was aus meiner Sicht, weil ich halt die Rohkostreinigung anwende, doch falsch ist, weil da der Körper einfach in einen gewissen Überlebensmodus versetzt wird, in diese klassische fight of flight situation Der Körper ist, möchte sich einfach so schnell wie möglich von diesen Giften befreien und pusht sozusagen den Körper und das hat dann dieser Energiestoß, der dann wieder nachlässt, wenn der Körper dann langsam wieder zur Ruhe kommt und ja, die Entgiftung ihren Laufen und euch. Ich fand es schon wirklich interessant, dass seine Sichtweise, dass für den Kaffee nur ein Genussmittel ist, das sollte man genießen, so wie zum Beispiel auch das Essen ähm, sich hinsetzen sollte, seine Mahlzeit kauen sollte und sich nicht durch Fernsehen, Zeitungen oder sonstigen Sachen einfach hektisch sein Essen runterschlucken sollte. Und das passiert leider mit vielen Tätigkeiten hier in unserer Gesellschaft. Und da findet ihr einfach, man sollte einfach wieder Ruhe kommen und zur Vernunft kommen, zumal der konventionelle Anbau auch sehr verschwenderisch ist. Also im konventionellen Anbau wird zum Beispiel ziemlich mehr Wasser verwendet als bei ihnen im ökologischen Anbau und nur ca. 10% der Pflanze bzw. der Bohne, die ja auch eigentlich eine Frucht botanisch ist, wird nur verwendet und der Rest wird einfach ja, sozusagen nicht für den Verkauf verwendet, was eigentlich auch eine große Verschwendung ist. Also zum Beispiel hat er auch in dem Video, so also im Vortrag erwähnt, dass sie eine gewisse Blüte von der Pflanze verwenden und die Blüte kann man zum Beispiel in Smoothies anreichern, nochmal seinen Kaffee aufbessern oder verschönern und die verwenden halt so viel wie möglich von der Pflanze und das ist eigentlich der nachhaltigste Prinzip überhaupt, zumal sie auf ihrer Farm viele verschiedene Pflanzen auch ähm, ja, anbauen, beziehungsweise auch Bäume. Ich habe zum Beispiel Wildtomaten gesehen, Bananenpalmen, Mangos haben sie, Papayas und viele verschiedene Zitrusfrüchte wie Orangen wachsen auch zwischen den ganzen äh, Kakao, äh, Kakao bzw. Ja, Bäumen herum. Also eine nachhaltige Permakultur vor allem, weil sie halt auch viele verschiedene Sorten haben, die unterschiedliche Ungleichgewichte an Pilzkrankheiten eventuell haben könnten. Also sie haben zum Beispiel von Arabien, von Brasilien Pflanzen. Und wichtig dabei ist halt, dass sie momentan von einer gewissen schwarzen Insekt verschont geblieben sind, die es normalerweise in Brasilien 
heimisch. Aber das, ja, das Negative daran ist halt, dass diese dass dieser Insekt über Länder, über Länder hinweg ja, in andere Länder fliegt, dort wo halt zum Beispiel Kaffee im großen Stil angebaut wird. Also es ist halt, kommt halt vor, dass, die, ähm, dass das Insekt von Brasilien einfach nach Costa Rica von alleine wandert, weil es dort wahrnimmt, dass in dem Ort Kaffee angebaut wird. Da tun sie sich schon mal gut vorbereiten, aber ganz allgemein tun sie auch gut im Boden mulchen, damit halt, weil sie ja auch auf dem Berg anbauen, keine Ausschwemmungen passiert, dass der Boden immer ja, sozusagen Dauerhumus entsteht, nährstoffreich bleibt und nicht einfach durch eine Monokultur oder durch den nackten Boden die Nährstoffe den Hang runtergespielt werden. Also doch sehr nachhaltig das Ganze, muss ich sagen. Und mich hat es halt ziemlich gefreut, bei der Kaffeetour mit teilzunehmen. Die Leute haben sich auch gefreut, mich kennenzulernen, weil ich auch durch das Filmen auch auf mein Projekt aufmerksam gemacht habe und andere ähm, Teilnehmer der Tour und zum Beispiel auch Gabriel fanden es sehr bemerkenswert, dass ich schon in meinem jungen Alter mich für die Natur entschieden habe bzw. auch so ein gewisses nachhaltiges Denken habe. In diesem Sinne hoffe ich euch, Einfach, dass ja, das Video euch gefallen hat, ihr auch mal ja, sozusagen den Anbau hier in Costa Rica von Farmern der Region miterleben konntet. Ich würde mich natürlich freuen, wenn ihr meinen Kanal dementsprechend auch abonnieren würdet und auf die Glocke drückt. Es ist einfach auch dieses Video auch zum Beispiel in Social Media Kanälen wie zum Beispiel Facebook teilen würde, damit einfach mehr, immer mehr Leute darauf aufmerksam werden. Ich werde auch El Toledos, die Webseite bzw. die Tour allgemein auch in der Videobeschreibung verlinken, damit ihr, wenn ihr mal nach Costa Rica kommt, einfach hier ja, Kaffee vor Ort ja, anschauen könnt, wie er angebaut wird und auch die Leute dahinter kennenlernt. In diesem Sinne vielen Dank, dass ihr eingeschaltet habt und wir sehen uns im nächsten Video. Bis dahin. Ciao.